record. So, good afternoon, Ma'am Stella Marie Arsenias. I am Carlos Ira James Escleto, and this is my partner, Micaela Rachel Laguda. And we are here to present our academic presentation entitled Ateneo de Davao University and their implementation of online classes during the COVID-19 pandemic. So, presentation overview. These are the key topics. Under the key topics are our, are our introduction, background, pro-arguments, counter-arguments, and lastly, our conclusion. Now, for the introduction, with the recent global pandemic, the whole world adjusts within the new normal system. Along with it is the implementation of online classes that aims to continue learning at the comfort of our homes. As we are in a global pandemic, learning should not stop. However, everyone is affected and is struggling. Should consider not going through with online classes because not everyone can afford the requirements of online classes and could be left behind. Not everyone can cope up with it as most students prefer face-to-face -face learning and online classes might not be effective a student's main concern is to pass the deadlines instead of learning and may result to cheating. So, the DOH introduced the new normal system where everybody is required to wear face masks, face shield, and practice hygiene and social distancing because of the coronavirus that is circulating and infecting each and every one of us throughout the globe. So for the background, 20th of May 2020, Father Joel S.J. Tabora, who is known to be the president of Ateneo de Davao University, announced that the meeting to shift to online classes during this time of pandemic is a need since the institution has the proper materials that are needed to fully engage in online classes. He does not want any students to, student to be left behind, so he made a solution <clears throat> which he organized a scholarship program that encompasses all the, all, all the students that are having financial problems, especially those who are affected by the pandemic. The institution also provided free Wi-Fi modems and iPads that were distributed to every student who were enrolled in the institution to lessen the burden that is currently experienced by especially for the less fortunate. He also extended the enrollment for the students to be able to catch up. We are going online. We are going to help our students to achieve their dreams. A quote from Father Tabora. Everybody has a different coping up mechanisms and because of this, each student has the possible chances of struggling talking, taking their online classes because they prefer to be traditional. So for pro arguments and counter arguments, the first con argument is not everyone has the luxur luxury of a fast and stable internet connection, as well as the gadgets needed to attend an online class. If the participant's time online is limited by the amount of internet access they can afford, then instruction and participation in the online program will not be equitable for all students in the course. Second, there is minimal supervision that results to students not learning as much. They are just passing requirements, but they are not learning. Online method is an inappropriate learning environment for more dependent learners than independent learners. Third, lack of social interaction is not effective for everyone since most students learn best with face-to-face -face learning and students have different coping mechanisms. So every student has different coping mechanisms. Others can adapt very fast while others struggle in adjusting. For pros, Flexibility is one of the most significant benefits of online classes, and it is the ability to fit your learning into your existing timetable. It helps students to complete their coursework without losing hours for current job or precious family time. So it allows the students to decipher when and how they will learn by tailoring their course to their own capabilities. Second, tuition fees are not the only thing you need to pay while studying. You will still need to include some additional expenses like transportation, food, and other expenses. In comparison, students who are studying online must pay a fixed annual fee. Third, 
one of the key reasons many students may postpone college graduation is because they still need to generate income. Not everyone as a student has the opportunity to leave their job and move into a full-time university. With the option of online courses, professional gaining a college education has now become much easier. So the students have enough to slowly grasp concepts and ensure full comprehension before moving forward. For counter arguments, there is minimal supervision that results to students not learning as much. They are just passing requirements, but they are not learning. Our group concedes the quality of learning cannot be controlled and the student's learning could be in jeopardy. Therefore, we refute that it depends on the stu student whether he or she is capable of such responsibility. So for the conclusion, Indeed, learning should not stop. <clears throat> However, at a time like this, where everyone is affected and is struggling because of the pandemic, we must halt all operations regarding the education of the youth because not everyone has the luxury to afford, to afford the necessities of online classes, which could, not result to, which could result to several students being left behind. Students differ in terms of coping, with that is what is happening as they have always preferred face-to-face -face learning. And finally, online classes can result to a low quality of learning as their primary concern in online courses is mostly to pass deadlines and not understanding. So even if the Ateneo de Davao University organized a grant in aid program which aims to help those those people who are not financially capable of supporting themselves to enroll in the current school year, online classes are not as effective as the traditional face-to-face -face classes because not everybody can afford to pay the, <clears throat> the, their expenses in their education, especially in this time of pandemic. So that is all, ma'am. Um, I am Carlos Ira James Escleta, and this is my partner, Micaela Laguda, and we are the presenters of our group, and we thank you for listening. Thank you.